still working on this little fella. All right, we've relieved areas down below where they needed to be. And now we're going to work on continuing to do that. We're not, we're going to leave the head for a little bit more. We're not going to worry about the head just yet. And so what we're going to do is remove some of this wood down here by the, by the boot. And so we're just continuing to shape. I said in one of the earlier videos that, that you don't want to work on just one area exclusively because what you want to do is work and see how everything is coming in together. That's one of the hardest things for carvers to understand is that sometimes you can't finish one area and just move on to another. You have to continue to evaluate how your carving is working out. You have to continue to look at what it looks like in terms of the relationship and the perspective to some other part of the carving. A lot of these carvings that we'll do, if you follow along with my videos, a lot of these carvings we'll do, we'll start in one area, move over to another, come back and forth and back and forth. We'll do that many times because it's the only way to get some of these carvings done properly. It's easy to get your perspective off if you're not sure where you're supposed to go. And so one of the things we have to watch out for is making sure that everything flows coherently. Coherently means making sense. So if you're not going to do that, then you're going to have to have some issues in making sure that your situations come out the way they should. So we'll continue just working a little bit here. We'll work a little bit there. We'll move over to another spot and we'll work back and we'll work back and forth. So in this case, I'm starting back down here at the boots because I didn't like the way the shape was. So all I'm doing is just running a little bit of that wood off, shaping it a little bit more, making sure that it's coming out where it needs to be. And so as we carve, we're constantly keeping an eye on everything else. You're, you're essentially managing this. All right, I want to work on this area back in here. I'm not going to worry about this area yet, but I want to work on this area back in here. This is the area between where the stick is and where the body is. So I'm just going to make a stop cut right there all the way down. And then what I'm going to do is make another stop cut along the body and just kind of follow those contours a little bit more and making sure that I'm coming out where I need to be. Make the stop cut there. Make the stop cut there. And I'm going to take my fishtail gouge and I'm just going to remove that wood. Hopefully I've made hopefully I've made enough of a stop cut on it to get down below where I want to be and take off some of that wood. It's going to be hard to reverse that and make that cut here, but you know we can pedal around with it. Again, we're not in a hurry. We're just trying to make sure this thing gets where it needs to go and gives us the depth we're looking for. See how we remove some of that wood there. We can go back and get more done. And continue just to take off more. I'm not going to worry about this up here just yet. I want to do some shaping to the head and the face. So I'm just going to worry about this area down here in terms of getting a little bit more depth between the body and the stick. I just want some more separation down there. And so I like using this fishtail gouge because it's a fairly sturdy blade and it can get in there. It's a short blade, it's not very long. And so if you've got one of those sort of stubby little blades that you can get in there with, you can show that depth <clears throat> between the stick and the in that area. Again, you have to make that decision whether you want it, whether you want it to be negative or whether you want it to be connected. It's entirely up to you. It's your card. All right. Um, now we're going to, we're going to reverse, not reverse. We're going to go up to the head and what we're going to do is start shaping that. <clears throat> if you know what a hat looks like, it's going to 
curve this way and it's going to curve around this way as well because that's the back of the head. The bill is going to come out somewhat like that and that's one of the reasons I did not want to work on the bill just yet nor did I want to slam into it when I was curving because I don't want it to be to be weaker. Anyway, I've got some saw marks here. I'm going to take a few minutes just to clean those off. Like I said, they get in my way. I don't like them. And so I'm just going to remove those saw marks. And as I said earlier, I always work over size. And so I've made the, the carving bigger than I wanted when I cut outside the lines. And I'm also going to cut some of that back. So you see that point up there, I don't want that. And I want this hat to be rounded. So I'm gonna take some slices off here to kind of move it back. And all I'm doing is just giving it some more of a rounded shape. I'm not gonna worry about cutting out all over here for the hat, although I will eventually get there. I'm just trying to give the hat more of a rounded shape. It's got a very steep back, and so I'm gonna to have to flatten out the top. So it looks more like a crushed, one of those hats with a crushed top instead of a high brim or high crown rather. So we trim it down a little bit, get rid of these harsh lines that we don't want and just make it look a little more like a baseball cap. I'm gonna follow that line back around here. So I'm just gonna take a V-tool. I'm gonna follow right around there and give it the indication of that hat having that particular shape. That will allow me to shape the hair. And so the hat, the hair, it's got, really follows the, the rough contour of the hat. And so what we're going to do is get in there. I've got a flexible knife. We're going to get in there and start to shape that hair just a little bit. I just want to give it some shape before I move on to other things. I can come back to it and really shape it around all I want. But I'm trying to get the roundedness of the head this way and this way. So I've got to get that hair tucked up under that hat. You can leave it long if you want, but we're going to make sure that we get it there where we want it to go. Okay. I also want to work on the bedroll because again, I've got those saw marks that I don't really like. I'm going to take them off. So I'm not trying to take off a lot of wood. I'm just taking off enough to get rid of those saw marks. I'm going to take off those rough edges because if you've ever rolled a bed roll, you know they don't have those sharp edges like that. They're soft and rounded because they have to be. That's what you're sleeping on. Anyway. Can't get in there with a knife very well, so I'm going to use my fishtail gouge. Like I said, one of the more important tools that I use. Okay. I'm going to separate that area between the hair and the bed roll. So I'll just leave that negative area right there. And then as we rolled it, we rolled it out like this, curled it. Looks like that's the edge of it. So the edge of it would be right here. Now I'm going to add what looks like some kind of strap. So as I draw that, this edge is going to be right here, held together with a strap, and there's the other edge. The edge is the part where the roll stops. So I'm going to take a V tool and I want to outline those areas that I just made over to the strap from the strap to the outside. And then I want to do the strap all the way up. And I don't need to make it go deep, but if you if you've ever done this, the straps on a bed roll kind of embed into the soft part of the bed roll. And so we don't want to make it look too goofy but what we'll end up doing is we'll end up going down 
down that way into that and that way into that and then relieving some of that wood. But anyway, I'm just going to leave it right there. We'll come back with a V-tool and we'll do that. Let's work on shaping this area between the body and the head. The body and the head are going to round down to each other. That rounds down to the head to the body and the body rounds down to the head. So we've got to reflect that. Fishtail gouge is a perfect thing for doing that because I'm just trying to get everything down to a level where I want. And so I'm just going to use this fishtail gouge because it will allow me to push everything down, including everything that I left high. I left the jacket high and the, and the strap going up here. I left the, the collar high. So I'm going to take that off because I can put it in later. And I'm just going to nibble it down to where these things are looking like they're realistic which means I'm just trying to get them on different planes with separation between those two planes if you can get an idea of what I mean okay I'm going to do that with the hair using the same fishtail gouge we're going to continue working and pushing everything back remember when we talked earlier in one of the videos about planes and depth we have to watch out for that when we're doing a relief carving because everything has to kind of flow together even if it really in reality doesn't flow together we have to make it look like that so now we're getting the head to round that way we'll move it this way as well we'll get it to round down this way and the body to round that way so we'll call this video good at 11 minutes and see you on the next one